Cameron, are we in the midst of a housing crisis or is it a real estate boom? Yeah, Norelda, it depends on which side of the bet you're on. If you're a housing investor, it's a boom for you. And if you're a renter, it can be a crisis. And that's, of course, not a crisis for renters. And I think we need to acknowledge this reality a little bit more, that there are, there are two sides to what we're calling the housing crisis. It's not a crisis for everyone. It's a market adjustment. And there are some winners and some losers. Well, let's look at the, the losers, uh, those in acute need of a home. So women escaping violence, overcrowded First Nations households, whether they be in community or in inner cities, uh, low income earners working multiple jobs who still can't afford rent. Are there any quick solutions for that category? Yeah, unfortunately, there aren't really quick solutions. Uh, the reality is that those groups, the market is not going to satisfy them most of the time. Uh, and so governments really need to step in and be much more active, having a what we'd call a social housing net or a safety net for housing uh, for those groups. And I think because prior to COVID, housing was relatively stable uh, outside of Sydney and Melbourne, Melbourne, the prices and rents, there wasn't a huge incentive to be active on that front. And now we've got this sudden market adjustment and, you know, we need a bit of a safety net there for those who are really missing out. What is the safety net? Are there examples of governments buying crisis accommodation? Yeah, so, for example, state governments are responding as, as best they can. I'm, I'm from Queensland and the Queensland government, for example, is buying uh, hotels from in investors, empty hotels and using that for accommodation, buying uh, unused retirement villages from institutional investors. That's one quick way to get buildings uh, onto your books and be able to allocate them to people. So that's been great. Uh, the question is, can we keep this up and expand it and, and entrench it so that the next cycle, when this same thing happens again in 10 or 15 years' time, we're, we're much better at it than we are today? Some are blaming the housing crisis on migration, but if we need skilled migrants, can we afford to cut migration? Look, I think there's a bit of uh, bad mathematics there. With We need more skilled migrants to build homes for skilled migrants. Look, uh, for the last 25 years, we've had a shortage of skills and record high migration, and it's never seemed to, to catch up. Um, and in fact, the, the unexpected boom in migration that we've seen uh, since the border reopening COVID has really sort of tightened up some of those rental markets in, in key areas. Now, it's not that we won't work through that and over the next six or eight years build more houses and accommodate those people, but there's a, a big surprise temporary effect that is not helping the rental market at the moment. Now, what impact will our decreasing birth rate have? The Bureau of Statistics tells us that in 2022, Australia's total fertility rate was 1.63 babies per birthing parent, but mm. the level required required for replacement is 2.1 babies in the absence of migration. So if we're reproducing less and we cut migration, what does our population look like in five years? Well, it will still grow for a little while. And in fact, there are many countries that have similar birth rates that are doing just fine, who've also had housing uh, booms uh, since the low interest rates of COVID and, and the economic expansion since then. Look, uh, there is nothing special about the 2.1 children per woman replacement rate. Uh, you know, the market economy adjusts whether we're growing a little or declining a little. Uh, there's, there's no magic number where things get bad. And what you find, the experience abroad of countries whose birth rates did fall, for example, in the 1990s uh, in many countries in Europe, they've actually recovered slightly in the last 15 years. And so, you know, hitting Crossing that threshold of 2.1 children per woman doesn't mean that it's an inevitable decline uh, forever from this point. We will bounce around and stabilise and we'll be able to adjust no problem. Cameron, we're seeing an interesting trend in the number of people per households and that's decreasing. Mm -hmm. Is density a factor in the supply of homes? Look, a lot of the, yeah, we've, we've actually got more bigger, better homes per capita than any point in history in Australia. So, you know, if there's a shortage of supply, uh, it, it isn't now, right? It's, it's sometime in the past. So we have all these great homes. I think part of the debate mixes up density, which is the number of homes on a spot, on a location, with supply, which is how many homes we build per year. And in the 2010s, we were very good at building lots of new housing at all sorts of densities. Um, but since the COVID disruption, it, just like many countries abroad, it's been very, very difficult to accelerate construction um, in this very tight economy we're seeing right now.